Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Emily Sue. And I'm Raymond Yang. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Health chief tells traders not to let poultry loose in the city in latest bird flu flap. Financial Services Secretary warns that the city's economy will slow down for the next few years. U.S. slaps more sanctions on North Korea after blaming Pyongyang for Sony hack. Angry poultry traders who threatened to release thousands of chickens on the streets of Hong Kong were told today they could lose their licenses if they do so. Health Secretary Ko Wei-man issued the warning after talks with the traders, who are upset about new rules to combat bird flu. Arthur Urquiola reports. Government representatives met poultry traders this afternoon after wholesalers suspended live chicken sales for 21 days to protest against new government measures to stop bird flu. They're unhappy that chickens on the mainland will be taken to a segregation center in Taku Ling for inspection before being taken to markets. They argue that this drives up their costs and isn't even effective. On Wednesday, 19,000 chickens were culled at Chung Shao Wan Wholesale Market, and the imports were suspended after the H7 strain of bird flu was detected in a batch from Guangdong. Normally, live chickens would be taken to Chung Shao Wan and sold to retailers. Speaking on the radio this morning, the city's health chief said he felt both sides wanted to resolve the issue. If we cannot find a solution to allow this um, stock of chicken to be released to the market, they will grow over age. So I, I, think, I think there certainly would be incentive for different stakeholders to come together to work out um, an arrangement which is acceptable to all parties, as well as um, fulfilling the um, very stringent requirement in terms of infection control. The government appealed for calm yesterday after traders threatened to unleash around 5,000 chickens in Central and Chimcha Choi if the administration didn't respond to their concerns about the new checkpoint. But Ko warned that could cost farmers their licenses. Agriculture, Fishery and Conservation Department has already reminded all the local chicken farmers that uh, without their permission, these chickens cannot be released outside the farm. Um, such actions may be considered as a breach of the licensing condition. And the department has already reminded the farmers of the possible consequence of such breach. After today's meeting, Kosa talks will continue to try to get live chickens back into local markets. He said more discussions will be held to find a solution to resume supplies while making sure adequate safety measures are in place. In a compromise, retailers said this evening that the government will now allow them to pick up chickens from Taku Ling on different trucks, which will make it easier to get them to the market. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. The government hasn't ruled out the possibility of injecting more money into a recently announced Housing Authority Fund, according to the Financial Services Secretary. At the same time, Chen Kao warns that the city's economy will slow down this year, and it may set the trend for years to come. Winner Wong reports. Taking to the airwaves this morning, Financial Services Secretary Chen Ka Kung said he expects the economy to grow at a mere 2 percent this year and warned that slow growth may be here to stay. He's worried that political bickering will affect Hong Kong's long term prosperity. Chan also admitted that the government still doesn't know how much money the Housing Authority will need to meet its 10 year target. This comes after Financial Secretary John Sung announced last month that a $27 billion fund has been set up to help the Housing Authority meet its target of building 290,000 public and subsidized flats. The announcement shocked pro-government and opposition politicians, with many unable to understand the purpose of the fund when the government already has budgets set aside for construction projects. Despite that, the government official said today that even more money may be injected into the fund. 
We're still not sure about the exact amount the housing authority will need to meet its target, said Chan. I'm sure the financial secretary hasn't ruled out the possibility of adding more to the fund when the time comes. Chan also said high property prices will eventually affect the city's competitiveness, so the government must concentrate on land development. He added that the matter is urgent, as land development projects can take decades to complete, so he hopes the community can reach a consensus as soon as possible. Wen Wang, ATV News. There's been more support thrown behind legal scholar Albert Chan's proposal to allow blank votes to be cast in the 2017 chief executive election as a compromise between bickering political parties. At the same time, another giant pro-democracy banner has been put up on one of the city's major landmarks. It's back. For the fourth time in two months, a giant yellow pro-democracy banner was hung on Lion Rock. Bearing the umbrella icon, which symbolizes the civil disobedience movement that paralyzed parts of the city for 79 days, the banner said, I want genuine universal suffrage. No one has claimed responsibility for the message hung on the hill, which represents perseverance for Hong Kong people. The first time a similar stunt was pulled was on the 23rd of October by a group of climbers known as Hong Kong Spidey in a show of support for the mass sit-ins. Although all Occupy protests have been cleared, all 27 pandemocrat lawmakers have vowed to veto the government's political reform package as long as it follows Beijing's strict rules, which would bring the city's constitutional development to a standstill. In the face of the divide, legal scholar Albert Chan has proposed an electoral model to strike a compromise between the pro-Beijing and opposition camps. Under his proposal, voters could cast blank ballots if they're unhappy with all the chief executive candidates chosen by the official nominating committee. If more than half of voters cast blank votes, the 2017 poll would be declared null and void, and an interim leader would have to be elected for a two- to three-year term. Chan said today his proposal is rational and pragmatic, saying blank votes are dealt with in a similar manner in elections on the mainland. But the scholar admitted his idea may not be accepted by Beijing, saying he just wanted to spark debate in society. Meanwhile, veteran loyalist Rita Fan and Lech co-president Zhang yuk Singh have both endorsed the idea, saying it adheres to the basic law. And today, just as Chief Rimsky yun added his voice to the debate. Yun said for Chan's proposal to work, blank votes must be clearly defined legally to avoid any confusion. For instance, would an empty ballot be considered a blank vote, or should there be an extra option that says none of the above, Yun said. The Justice Chief added that how blank votes are dealt with in the city's other elections must also be taken into consideration. However, Democratic Party Chairwoman Emily Lau is against the idea, saying casting a blank vote isn't genuine universal suffrage as it doesn't provide voters with a real choice of candidates. She called on Chen to convince Beijing to modify its restrictive political reform framework instead. Five firefighters and a security guard have been killed while clearing debris from a burnt-out warehouse in Harbin. The fire broke out at lunchtime yesterday and was reportedly put out by 7 p.m. But when firefighters went inside to clear, to clear up later, the ceiling of the third floor collapsed. The fire reignited at about 1 a.m., causing another wall to collapse. Another 13 firefighters were injured. Up to 2,000 nearby residents also had to flee their homes. Overseas, Washington has imposed new sanctions on North Korea over its alleged involvement in a cyber attack on a Hollywood film studio that released a movie poking fun at its leader, Kim Jong-un. But the attack didn't directly involve those targeted in the sanctions, which Washington says will further isolate the nation. Arthur Akiola reports. North Korea was already facing punishing sanctions because of its nuclear program and Washington slapped more on three of the impoverished nation's organizations and ten individuals. The organizations include Pyongyang's main intelligence organization and two companies which deal weapons for it and support its defense research. The ten individuals either work for the organizations or the North Korean government. The sanctions deny access to the U.S. financial system and ban any transactions with U.S. citizens. It's believed the sanctions were imposed in response to last year's alleged cyber attack on Sony Pictures, which came as it was due to release the interview, a comedy about killing North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The White House says the sanctions are designed to further isolate the North, to deter it from any future cyber attacks. North Korea has denied any involvement in the hack. The cybersecurity community also doubts Pyongyang had anything to do with the hack, 
which industry experts believe was almost certainly an inside job. They point out that the attack could not have been carried out without insider knowledge of the company systems and that it came just months after Sony sacked hundreds of employees. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. Overseas, the British royal family has been shaken by allegations Prince Andrew had sex with an underage girl in orgies around the world. But first in our roundup of international news, Indone Indonesian officials believe they found the body of the Malaysian passenger jet that crashed nearly a week ago. Winner Wong reports. Indonesian authorities say search teams have discovered two large objects on the seabed, believed to be parts of the Air Asia plane that crashed last Sunday. The objects were found using sonar 30 meters below the Java Sea. The plane went down with 162 people on board after encountering bad weather on its flight from Surabaya to Singapore. The British royal family has denied claims by a woman in Florida court documents that she was forced as a minor to have sex with Prince Andrew and other high-profile figures linked to a wealthy U.S. businessman. The woman said financier Jeffrey Epstein made her have sex with the Duke of York in London, New York and on a private Caribbean island as part of an orgy with other underaged girls. Buckingham Palace said the allegations are categorically untrue. The unnamed accuser said Epstein kept her as his sex slave between 1999 and 2002. The claims come amid mounting allegations of a massive pedophile ring in London involving politicians in the 1980s. Dozens of people held more anti-police brutality protests in New York, this time targeting the offices of News Corporation, which they accused of bias and racist coverage of the recent rallies. The protests flared up across the nation after grand juries decided not to punish police officers for killing two unarmed black men. We're not against all police, we just want account accountability for the bad ones. So we're out here demanding fair and justified news coverage. So this was in the post today, and in my opinion, this is not only biased, this is unethical. This headline is clearly racist, and I don't think that's right. New York has been plagued by protests since the grand jury decisions in November. Weeks later, a gunman vowing to avenge the death of the black men killed two New York policemen. Winnawong, ATV News.